Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is talk about some of the tests that I recently did on a Subaru Impreza to measure if in fact the standard spoiler creates downforce, or if not, if a big wing creates downforce. So here's the car, it's actually my 16 year old son's, it's his first car, and he's got a 2002 model Impreza RS, and you can see it already comes with a rear spoiler, and as is the case with most young people, he wanted the biggest wing possible that he could find to fit to that car, and it's actually a replica of the one off the STI model. So, three tests. The first one, no rear spoiler, a bare trunk lid. Test two, the standard RS rear spoiler, and test three, the STI wing. But how was the testing actually occurring? Well, we measure the height of the rear suspension, and I use these height sensors, which are from an air suspension Range Rover, and here's one of them fitted to the rear suspension on the Subaru. So a couple of ball joints, a link. As the suspension gets compressed, this arm moves, as the suspension gets extended, this arm moves. And what we want is to measure the average ride height. Now, I use this simple circuit to smooth the output of the sensor. It's only got three or four components, and here it is built over here, and it gives you an average ride height. And I simply measure that with a multimeter, I feed a five volt regulated signal to the little board from a simple phone adapter. And by reading what it says on the multimeter, I can get an average suspension height. Now, if the ride height is higher, it means there's aerodynamic lift occurring. The, the bodywork is actually being lifted upwards. And so the ride height gets higher. If the ride height is lower, it means there's actually downforce occurring. The body is getting squashed down on those rear springs. And that sensor and being able to be read by the multimeter, the average reading can tell us what's actually happening. No guesswork, we can actually measure it. So, took off the standard RS spoiler and here is a graph of the results. Now we have voltage coming out of the sensor up this axis, and the higher the voltage, the higher the ride height, and down the bottom we have speed in kilometers an hour. And we always do a starting one at 20 kilometers an hour, where basically there's no aerodynamic forces, and then we go faster from that point and see what happens to the ride height. And here, with no wing and no spoiler, you can see the ride height actually increases as you go faster. The bodywork is being lifted on the rear springs. The aerodynamic lift is causing the body to actually rise and so the ride height to grow. So with no wing or spoiler on the back of that car, there is aerodynamic lift occurring. Now, what about with the standard RS spoiler? You can see the graph looks quite different. Still the starting point at 20 kilometers an hour, but here the ride height actually gets a little bit lower as you go faster. There's not a lot in it, but it gradually gets lower. So we've got rid of all the lift, and if anything, we've got a little bit of downforce from that standard RS rear spoiler. It works. But what about the big wing? Wow, what a difference. All these graphs are the same scale, and we can see here, there's our starting point at 20 kilometers an hour. At 100 kilometers an hour, the ride height's got lower. At 120, it's got lower again. At 150, it's got lower again. And obviously, it would keep on getting lower as we went faster. The big wing actually creates measurable downforce. No guessing, no estimating, absolute measurement. So it works. Here's the actual replica wing, and it actually works in giving that car downforce at the back. Now, there's another reason it's also effective, and this is because if we look at the end plate, we can see there's a big area there, and if we looked at the side of the car, we can see we've added that area right at the back of the car, and that gives better directional stability. It moves the center of pressure, the lateral center of pressure, it moves it towards the back. So we've got downforce, and we've got better directional stability because of what's really a rear fin on each side. The result, the car feels noticeably different, especially on freeways, highways, when you've got gusting crosswinds. It works. If you want to read more about this sort of stuff, modifying the aerodynamics of your road car, how to make real measurements of real things on real roads, and see if your aerodynamic modifications are in fact effective. Thank you.